Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, talk on enhancing OpenStack firewall as a service for real world applications. My name is Sriram. I'm part of uh, the management and orchestration team at uh, Juniper Networks. Uh, uh, we, we are working on Neutron plugins uh, and VMware integration and few other aspects for the last uh, few years. Um, I have with me two of my colleagues, Sharath and Chandan, and together we are going to cover uh, a bunch of topics today. And uh, the, some of these are ideas that we believe uh, are good practices from real world firewall deployments that we have seen and how we can bring those good ideas back into OpenStack and share it with the community and provide much richer functionality with respect to firewall in OpenStack. So what we are going to do is start off with a quick overview of what is a firewall and how it you know, compares with security group, and then quick uh, touch upon the uh, firewall as a service functionality. And then we will move on to the uh, three ideas that we have, uh, which we think can be uh, useful in various scenarios. So the first, uh, the, to give a background, the difference between a security group and a firewall as a service uh, is really if you take a very simple uh, OpenStack setup with a bunch of compute nodes, controller, and a network node, uh, the security group is something that is uh, realized using IP tables. And uh, it is uh, on uh, compute nodes. And it is basically uh, securing the traffic coming out of the VM's ports. Uh, the firewall as a service, on the other hand, is IP tables again, but this runs inside the network node, and to be specific, on the router or the namespace uh, for the router uh, that each network uh, is connected to. And again, it is applying policies on the router port. So it is securing traffic which is going from one network to another network. right? So how does this firewall as a service work in an in OpenStack environment? So as a tenant, uh, you create a firewall. Uh, and then you can also, the, the, the horizon steps are basically to create rules and policies. Then you create a firewall instance and then associate those firewalls to one or more routers to all the routers. And the moment you associate a firewall to a router, uh, the uh, IP table rules are configured on the network node and your traffic <coughs> is starting to, you know, the traffic flow is monitored and secured after that. So we have a few ideas that we think will really help uh, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, overall firewall as a service functionality. And what we're going to talk about today is how do we schedule a firewall policy? It is a very common functionality in uh, real firewalls to apply a firewall rule at a particular time of the day and how we can bring that functionality into OpenStack. Uh, the next one we have is uh, leveraging firewall logs. Uh, logging is uh, another very critical component of uh, firewalls and how we can take out the intelligence from uh, syslogs and the logs that are generated from firewalls and make use of it is something that we're going to talk about. And the last one is an interesting topic where the ability to choose a particular router slash firewall. Like I said, the firewall as a service works on router or the namespace and IP tables. But we want to extend that and make it more capable and how you can do that is uh, something that we want to talk about. Okay. So I'm going to hand it over to Sharath, and he's going to cover the uh, how the scheduling aspect and follow it up with a demo. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarit Chandra. <coughs> I'm a tech lead with uh, Juniper Networks. So I work on uh, OpenStack Neutron plugins, and my primary focus is on the firewall as a service uh, area. So <coughs> in the current uh, uh, proposal, like in the current idea, so what we see is in the field, one of the most widely used features by network admins is the ability to schedule firewalls at certain uh, time intervals of the day. So this enables them to um, restrict access to certain websites and access to their remote servers, SSL servers, FTP servers at certain parts of the day. So this actually uh, frees up their uh, bandwidth and improves productivity and gives them more uh, return on their investment. So we see that IP tables library, both on uh, CentOS as well as Ubuntu, supports uh, the ability to schedule fire rules. And uh, by default, it uses UTC as the time zone. And uh, <coughs> to take an example, let us say you want to create a rule. And you want to schedule a rule from morning five, 9 to 5 on all the weekdays. You will uh, try out something like this. So the command is like IP tables. And uh, you define the chain. And the match condition is time. You follow it with uh, like the time start. You'll say, I want to start my rule from 9 o'clock. 
till the time stop is 5 o'clock on all the weekdays from Monday to Friday and the action that has to be taken on the rule. So this is basically the format in which you can <coughs> define a schedule on the IP tables. So these are the various parameters that are available to define a schedule. So one is date start which is a date time value on the date stop and if you want to just specify the time intervals you can say time start and stop and uh, you can mention the uh, day of the week or month of the week using month days and week days. <coughs> so to take a few examples let us say you want to have a rule which runs only on the weekends you can say uh, weekdays is Saturday and Sunday or you want to have a uh, rule which runs between two date time intervals you can say date start date stop or two time intervals you can say time start time stop. So <coughs> to uh, get this feature working in uh, uh, OpenStack we had to do an enhancement in a few areas one is the horizon UI the other one is a neutron client and firewall service plugin and the firewall agent. So <coughs> we are visualizing the uh, enhancement in this way so basically when you navigate to the uh, firewall section on OpenStack you will see one additional tab where you can define your schedule basically that is the place where you go and define your schedule saying this is the schedule this is the name this is the various parameters for the schedule and then you can actually go to the uh, firewall rule section and when you are creating a rule you will be given an option to actually select the schedule that you want to associate the rule with you can say this rule can be associated with 9 to 5 schedule or you can set, choose the schedule that you want to associate the rule with so I will be showing that to you shortly in the demo. So this is my OpenStack installation. I don't think it's visible. Oh, sorry. No, I can't see. Okay. <coughs> so this is my OpenStack installation. As you can see <coughs> in the firewall section. <coughs> a new tab has got added. So this is the place where you define a schedule. So I'll give it a name. So I'm I'm taking two parameters right now. So one is both are date time values. So this defines today from 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock I want the schedule to be active. So I define the schedule here. <coughs> So now when I create a rule, so let us say I define it between two networks 20 and 30. So <coughs> this is the enhancement that has been done to this UI. As you can see this is the place where I can go and select the schedule that I just created previously. So I am associating it with the test schedule. So my rule has got added. So actually uh, in practice what will happen is uh, let us say you have an active firewall and this rule is already associated with this firewall. So in the back end the uh, firewall plugin will receive this command and actually push this uh, schedule onto the IP tables. So <coughs> for this demo we are taking a shortcut like basically we are capturing this information in the service plugin and dumping it into a log so that we can see what is happening in the back end. So as you can see, okay, I'll just show you the. Uh, sorry. <coughs> Let us look at the uh, Newton client. So a new command has been added, and you can see that. Can you make the font bigger. So I hope you can see this. <coughs> so basically uh, what you are seeing is like uh, the firewall schedule rule that has got defined in the UI has got added to the backend database and uh, Newton client is able to list it. So <coughs> you can execute all the commands. So these are the commands available create, delete, list and show. So you can say show test schedule will give details about the test schedule. <coughs> 
So <clears throat> what just happened is like uh, when you uh, created the firewall rule, so we are taking a shortcut here. So what it does is it sends this uh, uh, information to the firewall plugin and at that point we are capturing it and logging it in the uh, uh, back end. So as you can see this is the <coughs> command that has got captured. So you can see that IP tables a the source IP is 20 and destination IP is the 30 network. Protocol is TCP and the hyphen M time. The date start is the time you have given and date stop is the time you have given and the action is allow. So basically what we are showing here is that we are able to receive the uh, information from the UI and uh, the next enhancement will be to actually send it to the firewall uh, IP tables agent so that it can push it onto the IP tables. So this will end the demo. And I'll hand it over back to uh, Chandan. Can you still this? No, minimize it. Uh, hello everyone, I am Chandan from Juniper Networks and uh, today I will be speaking about the proposal of adding uh, packet logs in uh, uh, OpenStack firewalls. So uh, if you look at the firewall uh, implementation in OpenStack currently, uh, the way it works, uh, the way it works is like the tenant starts by creating some rules for uh, restricting or al allowing his packets. And then uh, what happens is he uh, aggregates this rule into a policy and that policy is associated to a firewall, right? Uh, now, uh, what he has to do is now, uh, next step is to iteratively go over the rule and verify that everything is working. So he has no way of understanding how his firewall is actually working uh, behind the scenes. So he has to actually send some packets, verify if things are actually what he wanted. So this is an iterative process. He might have to adjust his rule, come back and redo the rules. So this is what we see as a problem. And I think uh, adding firewall logs uh, to the feature set of firewall as a service will help us a lot in resolving this kind of issues. Uh, so this is where, Uh, this is where we are trying to propose the new uh, idea. Uh, I mean, I have seen some some uh, kind of work being done on firewall logging, but uh, we are trying to present a much broader picture of what can be done. So the problem that we see is currently is there is no way uh, of logging any any of the activities that your firewall currently does. So the tenant does not get to know when his packet is getting dropped silently by the firewall or uh, even when the firewall is working perfectly fine, you don't see how, uh, how effective it is. Do you have duplicate rules or uh, do you have uh, uh, false positive, like uh, you are too restrictive on, on your rules. Those kind of uh, intelligence are not provided back to the tenant. So this, these are the features that we uh, can uh, provide by uh, implementing firewall uh, logging. Again, in terms of troubleshooting, uh, you can have uh, firewall logs uh, which can help uh, help the tenant in debugging a new rule that he implements on the firewall. And uh, uh, I mean, these are, the, these are some of the very uh, uh, basic use cases that you can uh, directly benefit by implementing firewall logs. There are some uh, high level uh, mm, uh, use cases which implement, uh, which can be implemented with firewall logs, but they include some other components also. So one or, one or two that I have mentioned here is monitoring. Monitoring can uh, help with threat analysis. You can have uh, mm, correlation of threats. Uh, that means when, whenever uh, the attacker is actually targeting some part of your infrastructure, you can look at the historical data or you can look at the other infrastructures that you have in the same data center and that have faced the same kind of threats and uh, effectively improve your uh, firewall policy by adding new rules, right? You can have report generation and uh, auditing going on on your firewall logs, but for all of this to happen, the basic necessity is to have the firewall logs collected first. So this is what we think uh, can uh, can be brought in with this idea. 
fine tuning of rules can be done. Uh, that means uh, most of the time what happens is people are paranoid. They start with a very, very restrictive kind of rules. And when, uh, as and when the requirement is there, they try to open the ports. But sometimes uh, unintentionally you might be blocking some legitimate packets. In the similar way, you might have opened your firewall just to make sure something works. So all those things can be uh, caught by the audits of the firewall log. So uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, till this point we have just looked at uh, what are the benefits. Now let's look at how uh, these things can be implemented on uh, OpenStack with the default implementation of firewall. So here you, you can look, uh, uh, look at this slide and see how the OpenStack uh, firewall normally works, right? You have, the, uh, you have the tenant who is speaking to the uh, Neutron server, and the Neutron server is actually uh, having the APIs. These APIs are uh, what the uh, tenant will be pushing his configuration to. So once he is uh, pushing his uh, firewall configuration through this API, the API will actually pass it on to the Neutron agent uh, the firewall agent which will implement it on the uh, uh, firewall uh, uh, on the uh, router namespace using IP table configuration. Now what we want to do here is to enhance our Neutron API, the firewall API and give the tenant the ability to uh, add logging features so that he, he can enable logging uh, for a particular rule so that uh, uh, all the logs are generated. So once the, once the APIs are enhanced, you will have the agent pushing the IP table configuration to enable the logs. We'll see in the next few slides how to do that with IP tables. Once the logs are, con uh, uh, once the logs are collected or generated, uh, what we introduce here is a log server, which can be a centralized syslog server, and it will actually collect all the logs and then we can probably write a analyzer to generate the alerts and reports. But these are, these are not uh, within the scope. What is, uh, the idea is actually about uh, creating the logs first, right? So once the, uh, once the logs are analyzed, alerts and reports are generated, it will be given back to the tenant and now the tenant has a view on both sides. Uh, he has a, uh, how do you say, yeah, you, you have a cause and uh, effect relationship. Uh, whatever rules he is pushing and what is the what is the output he has a view of both both the sides okay uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, this slides actually show uh, um, the default implementation uh, of ip table based uh, firewall logs so as you know the, the default implementation of firewall as a service in OpenStack is based on IP tables. So we, we uh, did a little bit of uh, looking around and found that IP tables can very easily implement firewall logs. It already has the feature available. Uh, uh, here I show a very simplified command. Uh, the format is uh, very well known. You have the IP tables minus a chain and then a match condition and you also have the ability to limit the number of logs that are generated by this uh, logging command. And then you have a log target. Yeah. And again, you have a log prefix, which can be used to identify your uh, particular log message, right? And uh, then you have the syslog log level. <coughs> so this, these are some of the options. There are various other options that I have not mentioned. But uh, at the end, you can see there is, a, uh, there is an example that has been given. And we have collected some logs. In the next screen, you can see I'm pinging one of the IPs on the top. And in the bottom, you can see that uh, uh, you have the log format and the log collected. Uh, you can see that uh, yeah, there is the log prefix actually comes uh, as part of the logging and can be used uh, to identify this particular log, right? So this is, uh, uh, this is helpful and this can be easily implemented uh, within OpenStack. Okay, now that we have seen the IP table part, uh, the uh, configuration part of it, uh, we want to talk a little bit about how, uh, how we intend to implement this logging feature. We, we were visualizing this log feature to be implemented as two different uh, parts. One is uh, per rule logging, when you want to, uh, this is targeted more towards uh, like uh, debugging of your rule. So you, you are starting with a new rule and you don't know what will be the impact of your rule on your current uh, infrastructure. So what happens is, uh, you um, you can enable a, uh, enable a logging feature per rule 
and this will capture every packet that matches that rule right and log it and then there is a catch all rule which is going to uh, be catching all the log uh, all the uh, packets that did not match any of your uh, firewall condition or uh, rule condition and this will be more targeted towards generating logs and uh, creating alerts and things like that So here is a uh, mock-up of a UI. Uh, so uh, you can see uh, that we have done a little enhancement and given a checkbox, uh, which will actually allow uh, firewall logging to be enabled for a particular rule. And this is the this is the one I was talking in the previous uh, slide about uh, debugging a rule. And here is what we uh, give as a simplified. Uh, uh, again a mock-up screen simplified way to give a feedback of what we have collected what all the firewall rules uh, I mean firewall logs that we have collected and giving it back to the uh, tenant so what happens is now the tenant will know uh, what what he has done on the firewall and how it is impacting his uh, packet filtering so uh, I just want to summarize uh, so here is what we plan to do uh, uh, First of all, uh, we see there is a, uh, there is a possibility of improvement on the firewall as a, as a service uh, with firewall logs, uh, which can help in deb debugging of the situation, threat analysis, and you can fine tune your rules. Uh, firewall logging can be very easily integrated uh, into uh, into the OpenStack because uh, the default implementation that is IP table already supports it. We just have to uh, work on making things available to the end user. We introduced something called a centralized uh, log server and uh, log analyzer, but can be a simple syslog server or we can come up with better options. And we will need some enhancement on the UI side to make these things work. This is just exposing the feature. This is, this is just for exposing the features, which is already available. And I think uh, we have seen one attempt of doing this uh, by one of the uh, contributors, and we are trying to get in touch with him. And, uh, collaborate and see how far we can take it. Uh, this uh, we want to take it as at a much much higher level because he was just talking about collecting the logs. We, we want to expose the log back to the user so that becomes more usable. So uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in terms of uh, uh, logging. So uh, I'll give it back to my colleague Sriram. Uh, he's going to take the next. Um, just to recap. Uh, just to recap, we have covered two topics so far. One is uh, scheduling uh, firewall rules and how we can use logging to uh, generate information and intelligence out of the network. The next uh, thing we're going to cover is the ability to choose a router and a firewall. Um, to understand what what is the context for this, let's look at the challenges that we have today uh, in with the current solutions uh, in OpenStack. So I don't know how many of you attended the uh, DVR presentation yesterday, but uh, in a non-DVR case, your router and firewall is hosted on a network node. Uh, it faces a typical challenge of performance and scale uh, because you're perf it's uh, restricted by the uh, hardware configuration that is uh, available on the network node. And it's also the single point of failure. Uh, and HA in, in Neutron is not something uh, very easy to implement. Um, and in a DVR case, when you, uh, the proposal is to you know, move the routing into the compute nodes, you still have some limitation which is bound by the compute nodes capacity. So you still have some challenges. It does, resolve, it does solve the performance issue a little bit. And the third challenge that uh, we have seen is how can we leverage some of the rich features and functionality that networking appliances provide? For example, next generation firewalls nowadays can do very smart application level tracking and enforce security policies in a very dynamic fashion. How do we bring those capabilities into OpenStack where the default IP tables is supporting a very simple five tuple kind of uh, security policy? So the solution we are proposing is, uh, is, a, is a combination of things. Um, you, you, when you look at the uh, new network operating systems and modern networking hardware, it's more and more Linux based. So it's possible to leverage them and make them as a network node themselves. You can run uh, agents on them and they are purpose built for networking functionality and they are built from ground up for performance and resilience. So you don't have to reinvent HA or performance with those uh, appliances, right? So we can offload routing and firewall 
wherever needed into those devices. Uh, it's the, from the uh, real world perspective, you can bring in differentiated services. You can have some tenants realize uh, the benefit of these advanced services and make them pay for it. Or you can have tenants who want uh, uh, probably a lower quality of service and uh, go with IP tables approach. That flexibility can also be built uh, in, in, in OpenStack given its complete open nature. The, the idea is really we can have all the solutions coexist. It's not that you can go with one or the other. You, there is a possibility to support uh, different combinations. Uh, so I'm just taking a simple case here of a non-DVR and you know uh, uh, to highlight the problem. Let's say you have a setup where you have two network nodes, uh, network node 1 and network node 2. And the network node 2 happens to be a 2x powerful CPU and 4x memory compared to network node 1. Uh, when you try to create a router or firewall rule, you don't get as a choice as a user where that router lands up. It could land up on router uh, network node 1, which is not as capable, right? What, would, what if tenants wanted to choose and are ready to pay for it, uh, the ability to host their uh, networking services on a much more capable system? So there is a precedent in OpenStack for this. It's uh, not something you know, uh, that doesn't exist today. Uh, in OpenStack, you have the ability to choose a DHCP agent, and this functionality has been there for a while. As an administrator today, you can uh, attach a specific DHCP agent to a network. And this gives you those benefits of redundancy, performance, because you can you have the ability to choose the right DHCP agent for you. And you, in this uh, screenshot, uh, we have controller, which is a network node and a controller and a dedicated network node. And I'm just highlighting in OpenStack that you can choose it today. Sorry? Yeah, so that's, that's what we are getting there. So we want to make it available for routers and firewalls so as a backend application so that we know it can be done at the uh, 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 each level. We can sp choose a specific one for each and every router. So, and uh, the firewall as a service, because at the scope it works, the next thing we want to do is associate to a router at the router creation screen itself. So that, and uh, again, what we have suggested here is you can retain the default behavior also. We don't want to, there are routers where tenants want to create their routers on a specific uh, particular network node or a firewall. It could be physical or virtual. They have the ability to choose. And what we want to do further from here is depending on the capabilities of that router and firewall, expose advanced uh, capabilities to our customers and end users. Uh, the additional benefits, uh, which is basically if you want to move to an NFV kind of a model, you don't have to rip and replace everything. You can bring up nodes dedicated with uh, virtual form factor uh, uh, firewalls and routers, appliances, allow uh, users to move one step at a time instead of uh, moving one shot and you know, grow, their, grow your system over a period of time to a more uh, richer SDN-based solution. So those are the three topics we wanted to cover. Uh, uh, we have, sorry. <coughs> so uh, we had some more ideas on performance and scale improvements. Uh, you know, uh, you want to cover that? Okay, I think we have time. So <clears throat> we wanted to cover this uh, in case we had a t little bit of time left. <coughs> so basically, uh, this is like uh, in the current implementation of firewall as a service, <coughs> we see that there are a few performance issues uh, which can be fixed very easily. So <coughs> this is like uh, looking at the existing problem and proposing a solution. <coughs> so let us take the use case where we have four networks, network 10 and 20 are connected by a router, 30 and 40 are connected by <coughs> another router. <coughs> So the first problem is in, in OpenStack, today when you create a rule, there is no validation done. You can actually start creating invalid rules. So basically I'm creating a rule from 70 to 80 network, which is not there in my topology. So which is, <coughs> which actually succeeds in OpenStack. It doesn't do any validation. So the second problem that we see is, let us say, you create a firewall policy and associate uh, three rules to it. But uh, rule one is specific to router one, rule two is for router two, rule three is for router three. So even till kilo, what we have seen is <coughs> all the three rules are pushed on to all the routers. So which is basically router one doesn't even care about rule two and rule three. So that is the problem that we are seeing, um, that we have seen. <coughs> so 
So the proposal is like, I mean, what we see is there is no rule validation and uh, unnecessary rules are pushed on to all the routers, which actually is like a uh, security hole waiting to happen and affects performance because when a rule is evaluated, it has to be, it has to scan across all the rules that are present in the system. <coughs> so coming back to the solution, what we see is, what we can do is when a invalid rule is added to the system, it can throw up an error to the user saying, I don't see this particular network in my topology. So we can reject it right there when you add a rule. So that is the first enhancement that we can do. And the second <coughs> thing we can see is, let us say I have three rules. Rule one is from network 30 to 40. Rule two is from network 10 to 20. And there is a third case which is called any rule, which can go to on the, all the routers in the system. So <coughs> you associate it to a policy and you create a firewall and associate the policy to it. So when you do the deployment, the rule specific to the 10 to 20 goes to it. Rule specific to the other router goes to it. The any any rule is a special case which actually gets copied to both the routers. <coughs> this is the optimal way in which we can actually utilize the rules. So these are the uh, two uh, things that we observe in the current OpenStack implementation which can be improved. So, so that, that's all we had uh, for today. Uh, before we go to the Q&A, we have a <coughs> few other things to quickly talk about. Uh, just. Yep. So uh, Chandan and I have uh, written a book on OpenStack networking, which was released uh, just a couple of days back. We have some free coupons. Uh, you know, we'll choose based on the Q and A session, whichever the best set of questions. Uh, this free, the three coupons for complete the book will be free. But we have discount coupons which anybody can use uh, at packpublications.com. So, any questions? Yeah, that, <coughs> that is true, yeah. but the case is like, uh, let us say you have a rule defined and you never created the network. It's like a rule which is which can be pushed on to any router, like currently. I mean, till you create the actual network, that rule is an invalid state. <coughs> the network has to be created. Yes. But it also could be that you can have the rule and then you can create the Yeah, network. we, we right. can still we'll the case, to, but yeah. We'll have to validate <coughs> that also. Yeah. yeah. And if it will be great if you can speak it on the mic, I think it gets recorded. Oh, okay. Yeah. This, this thing will get recorded? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, we we told that uh, first uh, first part of the problem is to start logging. That uh, I think yeah, it was very evident that we will use an IP table construct uh, or a configuration to start logging. And then what what we are proposing is uh, when the IP table starts logging, we will use syslog uh, configuration to push it to a centralized server. Right. So once you have the log uh, configured on the centralized ser server, then it's up to us. Uh, we can write a agent or a looping uh, call, which which can from time to time grab the logs from uh, from the log server. And uh, depending on the prefix, we had a log prefix, right? The log prefix can be used to identify such uh, say which tenant this is uh, going to uh, this logs are generating uh, which which tenant is generating these logs. So depending on that, we can filter out the log and show it to the tenant. So the logs can uh, capture the tenant ID or some identification information for the tenant. So that when you show it on the horizon UI, you can filter out the log specific to the tenant and show it to him on the screen. Okay, and these agents, these something that see the outside of Newton, can decide? It might, it might be totally outside of Newton, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, as I said, see, part of the solution is within Neutron, but uh, if you look at the bigger picture, if you want to uh, support the bigger use cases, you have to bring in, see, the log server does not have anything to do with Neutron, or uh, the analyzer does not have anything to do with Neutron, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we can either leverage them, or if you think there, if we think there is uh, value in creating our own, then only we can look at creating something like that. We can uh, always leverage whatever is there. 
So we have to make it pluggable. That's the theme of Neutron, right? So the OpenStack in general, we have to make it pluggable and customizable and leverage uh, solutions that already exist. Handle the deletion cases where a router is deleted and uh, there are like f rules, firewall rules associated with it. Yeah, so currently it is handled in Kilo also. So when you delete a rule, there will be a callback to the firewall plugin. So <clears throat> the, there is a callback which happens and uh, we actually can take care of the rule deletion. So <clears throat> at least, uh <clears throat> yeah, so basically the rule can be moved to a uh, inactive state. But in that case, we will be ending up with the... Okay, so if, if you take this particular solution, what right. I propose is if you have a bunch of rules associated with a router and the router gets deleted, these rules are now in an invalid state. Correct. So they can be moved to an inactive, deactivated state. There is an active or de uh, de inactive state for a rule. No, I think... <coughs> yeah. There's a difference between the firewall, firewall module rule. Yeah. So the firewall can will go into inactive state. So the firewall no, no, he's saying the router is deleted. The route out. You can delete yeah. the route out. See, rule stay. Yeah. yeah. The rule can remain, but it's not active. So basically, firewall is, active. Firewall is active. active. Okay. Let us let me tell the scenario. You have a firewall and a rule and a router, and uh, you have filtered the rules and applied to the router. Like you have rule one, which is given to router one. Now you go and delete the router one. Now on the firewall, this rule which is which has got pushed previously, what should happen to this rule? Inactive. This is invalid right now, right? Because the router has gone. Rule yes, the rule can exist. Rule can exist. Yeah, rule when can you exist. When you See, associate the rule will not be deleted in the... Uh, yeah, the thing is, when a router is deleted, you don't need to do anything to the firewall or the rule. It can exist. Uh, it, there could be other routers, or if it is the last router, it can still exist. When you create the next firewall or next router and you associate, that time validation needs to happen. No, the rule will exist in the UI, but it will become an in inactive state. <coughs> it inactive state, but the firewall will be in pending code. It, uh, it will be active when you uh, delete the router, it should go back to pending code. In the UI? Yes. So it should go now, but there is a bug uh, which I am working on. When we delete the router, the firewall should go back to uh, inactive. pending create state. Instead of uh, active, it should go back to. Okay. Yeah. I am not aware of that. No, no, no. <coughs> I mean, the pending create is a cycle. And then eventually, you will be the like firewall may be okay. on other <laughs> So you will come back to a, you know, it's an active. Yes. Exactly. Depends on the exact state at that point. If there are other uh, valid uh, uh, routers present, it should stay. The rule will be active, but the firewall which was associated with this router will go back to No, the firewall can be associated with multiple. Multiple. So, I mean, if you deleted <coughs> one router, you, you, you have, have to validate. With other routers. Correct. And in which case, you know, you, you will continue to be inactive. By the way, use the architect of the firewall router association. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <coughs> so All right. <laughs> Good. Um, I think we are done. Uh, we are okay. Yeah. I think we are. Thank you and uh, thanks for coming uh, and listening to us. And we'll be available right here for if you need some other help or questions or discussions. Thank you. <laughs>